Well, um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And good morning, distinguished experts and ladies and gentlemen. Um, today, I'd like to show you some very, very optimistic my ideas. So I have been interested in the Arctic shipping since 1990s. And when we talk about the Arctic shipping, we need to consider, we need to take into account wide range of issues, such as uh, the navigation in icy waters regarding navigability, maneuverability, safety, cost, emission, risks, and business models, governance, policy, social effect regarding not only Arctic states and community, but also non-Arctic uh, regions and so on. And this morning, I'd like to talk about the container liner service via the Northern Seaworth. I know that this idea is very, very much optimistic. But however, in recent years, bulk transport by destination shipping is not a dream. And it could be an actual business if commercial conditions such as fuel price, freight market, Asian natural resource market, and political stability in the Arctic becomes suitable. And in fact, crude oil is already transported from the Russian Arctic coast year round and Yamaro energy, Yamaro energy transport will come soon. And my idea of liner service via the Northern Sea Route is by using uh, seven ice crust container ships of 4,000 TEUs. So here TEU means that the 20 feet container equivalent unit. And those ice crust ships are operated by 49 days of one loop between Europe and East Asia. And ships are using the Northern Sea Route in summer for about 150 days. And in the rest of the season, they sail through the Suez Canal. And by this model, shipping cost becomes almost equal to the Suez Canal scenarios using 8,000 TEU ship in 84 days in one loop operation. But this Northern Sea Route scenario could not be competitive against actual shipping operation by using mega container ships such as 20,000 TEUs by a Suez Canal nowadays. And in this operation, ships are required to call at many intermediate ports to collect cargoes to uh, fill their huge capacity. And this is one reason to take long days for cargo delivery by a, uh, by a Suez Canal. On the other hand, there is no intermediate ports along the Northern Sea Route, so that the Northern Sea Route scenario enables quick delivery for cargo owners. And in this scenario, the certain number of icebreakers would be needed in early summer and late fall because of the sea ice existence. And however, number of Russian nuclear icebreakers is limited, and there's, uh, their first priority will be escorting ships that carry natural resources from the Russian Arctic coast. So this would be one of the headaches of this uh, Northern Sea Route uh, line of service scenarios. At this moment, Japanese shipping companies are pessimistic, pessimistic to discuss line of service by a Northern Sea Route. But destination shipping of natural resources and related project cargo shipment are uh, already become a natural business issue of them. And China would be the first to operate con commercial shipping of container by a Northern Sea Route in future. So in, if it's happened, Japan will eager to accept the Arctic liner ship since that service could shorten the distance between Europe and Asia and advance commercial relationship of the two regions. Furthermore, to collect stable and enough quantity of cargoes, uh, cooperative development by CJ, CJK, China, Japan, Korea, would be a key factor. And here, of course, this uh, industrial utilization of the Arctic must, should be carried out by a sustainable manner, not only experimentally, but also in social and commercial point of view. And this is my very, very optimistic comment on the utilization of the Northern Sea. Thank you.